<clears throat> All right, I took a risk. We, we did the intro. I need to uh, talk to Allison McClone. She has such a good intro, a great outro. I need to figure out how to do it properly. Anyway, uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. A few days early. <clears throat> Merry Christmas! It's going to be a fun one. Uh, and Henry Jeremick bumble, bumble. commented that he, he wanted this to be Wendigo from... Alpha flight. It's not gonna be. This is gonna it's be. It's a bumble. Look at. Oh my gosh! Look at that cute little like post you put there. Oh, with like, the thumbnail. Yeah, the thumbnail yeah. thingamajigger. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Here we go. Let me bring up my reference. Let's do it. this. I had it and I lost it. All right. Nothing more Christmassy than the bumble. <clears throat> do you know who did a bumble years ago? No. Tom Morris. Yeah? Yeah, he posted on the street on his uh did you post it to the flock, Tom? I can't remember. Or maybe on his own feed I saw it. But he did a good job because I mean it's Tom, right? Yep. It was a great painting. I think it was like four years ago, five years ago. By the way. Can I sing Christmas songs on here? Yes, they're not. They're not copyrighted? Right. We wish you a Merry no, Christmas. Copyrighted. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, yeah, my big wish mouth. you a Merry Christmas. Oh, I'm gonna sing all night. And a happy new year. Okay, okay. We're all grateful. Thank you. Oh, you know, it's um, totally going to be that. Thank you for telling me that, Dave. Good tidings okay, we okay. bring. Oh, no. <laughs> um, the last YouTube video that I just put out, <coughs> for those of you that watched it, the sound is not good. Uh, it, it, what it is, it, so I figured out what was happening. It took me a while to figure out, but... <clears throat> What happened is I've got my microphone, this one here, here, and uh, it, it was working fine, but this microphone on this little thing here was on, even though it's actually shut off in the app, um, and I could not get the thing shut off. I finally went into OBS, and I managed to just turn the volume all the way down, and then I deleted the channel. It still worked. I was afraid deleting the channel might break everything. It worked anyway, so it should not happen again. But unfortunately, once I got into post and was editing, there was just no way to. I spent a good four hours trying to fix the audio, and I just could not do it. And uh, so yeah, there's a point that I just I put it out. So yeah, it's it was what it was. So yeah, apologies for that. You know, it's kind of a kind of a bummer, but. Eric wanted me to sing the Mariah Carey Christmas song. Okay. But I, I'm i just typing back to Eric, so I'm just going to tell him. I don't think I can sing that. She's got to have that copyrighted. Uh, anything new. Yeah. When you're looking at like some of the old classics. Like and, Good King Wenceslas, I can sing. But Good you can't. King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of oh, Stephen. No, no, no. Where the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. It's going to be the worst dream of all time. It's you know, going to be the best dream of all there's, time. There's a... The a, joy I feel in my heart right now. A good case to be made for you can, but should you? Yeah. Yes, I should. It's my gift. My gift to the stream the flock. <coughs> He's got such a 60s haircut. Anytime there's a lull. Yeah, I know you're typing. I can hear you typing. No, I'm just going to sing. <sighs> okay, you got to stop. I'm just going to shut this whole thing down. <laughs> like, there's a limit. I don't it think it only there takes is. so much. I, and Hannah is laughing out loud. I'm just going to say, okay, see so you guys. She's laughing bad. Air. Air. See, people like to hear me singing. No, they People don't. are singing on the stream right now. No. I see people singing. No, they're not. Extreme Maybe is singing. Psycho Pomp Chimp says, here we go, a waffling. <sighs> Matt Canty says a short delay on the video. Uh, yeah, Matt, um, I was very afraid 
to put up my intro because this happened before. Uh, and the last time it was, it was a problem because I, I forgot the intro and then we did it a little late. This time I did it right away. I thought, ah, hopefully it'll be fine. Clearly it's not. I'm going to talk to Allison and say, Hey, Allison, how do you do this properly? Because she, she said she'll help you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you, Allison. Appreciate it. And Allison's two favorites are the little drummer boy and we three Kings. So they'll be making an appearance tonight. Oh, nice. Oh, by the way, for those of you that missed it, I was on uh, Allison's channel on Thursday. Was it Thursday or Friday? It's you can't you can't buy this kind of entertainment, Dave. It's genuine. Uh, yeah. Genuine entertainment. For example. Chris Burke says, imagine a Christmas card that has Meredith singing when it's opened. I'd buy that. See? And Nicholas Hughes says, stream on the sing, which means he wants to hear me sing. American Discord, sing it loud, sing it proud, Meredith. Yeah, you know what? I think they're just trolling me. <laughs> Watch How Dave suffer. Black Tiger has a super chat for $2. Black Tiger says, I sang as a gift once. They asked for a receipt. <laughs> uh, you and Meredith could relate. Oh, Alison McGowan says, I said on Friday, no one wants to hear me sing. Yep, yep. Yeah, no happy birthdays with Allison. Nicole Francis, though, says, Meredith, lovely, sing, keep it up. And Brad Scott asked for a sing silent night. Or maybe just silence. Brad, don't make me ban you on Christmas. Okay, first of all, you guys are traitors. Second of all, all you guys are traitors. <laughs> Yves School of Art says, if I was there, I would go caroling with Meredith. Luke for, for Woodson says, I like Meredith singing. Hit us with some seven brides for seven brothers. I can't, Luke. It's Christmas. And also, that's probably copyrighted. But Christmas, I can sing. You know what it probably is? I should just be drawing the Grinch every year. Is that what the problem is? Yeah. Because you're the Grinch? Apparently. JDSCT has a super chat for $5. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, Dave. Merit in the entire Finch flock. Hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season. I'm getting a couple other characters in here. I don't know if you guys know this. Just don't tell Meredith. Sheldon Martin says, the singing sounds good to me. Sorry, Dave. They don't like it. They're just being nice. Otaku Samurai has a super chat for four ninety nine. Hello, I finally got my Remark Gambit comic and head sketch rogue from CGC. They're amazing. Thank you, and hope you go back to CGC next year. I, I will. They were so great. I, I said this when I did it, but they really were. Um, I had a great time. They brought me up for dinner. Very, very nice. Uh, I mean, they didn't have to do that, you know. Uh, yeah, they were they were great. I had a really good time. So I'm looking forward to doing something with them again. So next year, I'm sure I'll be doing it. And it's it's a nice way. Dog. Yeah, in case you're wondering, yeah, the dog is here. He's naked though this week. Yeah, we had to shave him down. He was getting a little long. On, on Tuesday. He looks like a completely different animal now. I'd take a picture, but I can't find my phone. Um, so, oh, I have an announcement. What's your um, announcement, Dave? In two days, just on Wednesday, and I, I need to, I'm so behind on everything. I feel like it's like the theme of the show. But um, I'm going to be doing a Christmas special with uh, Ryan Benjamin. And that is coming up on Wednesday on my channel. And then I'm going to be going to his channel just after Christmas, and we're going to finish our drawings or... I'm actually, you know what? We talked about a couple of different things. What I'm not sure how it will go, but we'll play it by ear. We're gonna work. We're gonna do something on each other's channel uh, for Christmas. So I have to do tonight after the stream is done. I have to do a um, uh, uh, Instagram thing with me and Ryan, Ryan and me. Sorry, Ryan. Ryan and I. Ryan and no, it would be Ryan and me. Oh. Uh, with what? like what would, what would be the original sentence me gonna do that with me oh. so anyway uh 
I'm going to do it, like, put us in Christmas sweaters. Basically, I'm going to take a picture, find a picture with Christmas sweaters. I'm going to, it doesn't matter. I'm going to Photoshop it in. It doesn't even need to look good. As a matter of fact, the worse it looks, (laughs) the better. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that for Instagram. I'm going to get that up tomorrow and do a nice ad for it. Uh, I know Ryan's going to do something for it too. And yeah, we're, we're very excited about it. We've been talking about it for a while. I wanted to say, Hey, we're doing this, but you know, uh, I don't want to jump the gun on announcing stuff. Anyway, I'm really excited to be doing something with Ryan. So that's coming up. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right, here we go. I'm drawing the actual Wendigo. No, it's not a Wendigo. Or Bumble. Bumble. Sorry, Henry. By the way, Henry, actually, he mentioned apparently Metallica has a new song uh, and it's not very good. Which is too bad. I actually know Metallica's new song. Do you? Yeah, I haven't heard it. It's We Three Kings of Orient are very gifts. Why did I walk into that one? Okay, we get it. I gotta get this far. Moor and mountain following. Nobody's watching anymore. You know that, right? Why do you make me laugh? Because it ruins my singing when I'm trying to sing through a laugh. Everyone has just given up. Well, you know what? I'm just trying to relax. What are we doing? Up right now. Just trying to have a good time. I'm having a good time. Doesn't have to be this way. My favorite stream of all time. Why have I not been singing on every Christmas stream? Oh, and you know what? Tapelli says, hi, David Merritt. It's my birthday today. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know what that means? That means Tapelli's banned. <laughs> Happy birthday to Tapelli. Happy birthday to Tapelli. Happy birthday, dear Tapelli from the flock. Happy birthday to you. Um, we got the uh, uh, sketches mailed out, by the way. So those will be uh, out to you guys um, ASAP. But yeah, they're they're mailed out. So uh, yeah, that took too long. It took longer than it should have, and I apologize. But hey, uh, life happens. Life happens, and it, yeah, we're look. We're just behind on everything at all yeah. times. But it's out. So there you go. Adam Meyer has a super chat for twenty dollars. Adam says, "Happy holidays!" Mm-mm. I gotta make it twenty dollars worth. Hey! Oh, you're yelling right in the microphone. You're yelling right in the microphone. Stop it! Just relax. Have some fun. Don't be so serious. I don't. Time. I'm not a fun person. This stream was not supposed to be fun. It's, this is so not what I. It's for Christmas. the record, I'm hijacking. This whole channel, not supposed to be this way. This is not what I had planned. I'll draw the grum. I'll draw the grumble, the grumble bumble. I'll draw you. I'll just draw a big old ball face. (laughs) So not what I wanted for this channel. You know what, Dave? Sometimes you don't get what you want. But you get what you need. Sometimes you get something better. Uh, I thought you were going to. Okay. Yeah. This pure retro has a super chat for five pounds. He says, Dave, Meredith was singing the new Metallica song and now chickens are swarming my room. You got some <laughs> splaining to do. <laughs> and the super chat from from Jamal Rashid for 499. Monday night draw. We in the house question, Dave. Have any advice on drawing comic book explosions? Uh yeah, actually, I, I do. And let me let me just get his face in here. Just quickly, just kind of. This is the one I'm worried about the most. The other ones, uh, they seem easier. I don't know. I struggled with this one in the sketch. Like, uh, usually in the sketch, I feel like okay, I, I got it. Even if it doesn't look like much for me, I, I can see where I'm going with it. This one, I that was? did not feel it. It looks your gum. Yeah, thanks, Meredith. But the dog had it in his mouth. <laughs> he found a piece of gum. Nope. Come here. Come here, you. All right. So explosions. So the first thing you need to know is kind of where your explosion is coming from. I'm going to draw a point Uh, uh, uh. just like that. And uh, it depends on how big you want the explosion. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and um, just draw some. Some lines kind of radiating, uh, radiating up from that point, um, basically. So 
So I got something like that. And then I'm going to just start to, and I've done this a bunch of different ways. You know, this smoke and clouds and this kind of thing are all kind of a, uh, a common question. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm making sure to vary the size and the, it, like this one here is going to be just about that big. And it's about that far from this one. I wouldn't want to put another one exactly that far. It would start to look really um, uniform. So I'm going to bring the other one just a little bit closer. Another small one here, another one here. Also, something to think about. I can make smoke look like it's coming away from you just by layering it this way. Or I can make it look like it's coming towards you by layering it uh, this way. You see what I mean? Anyway, so I'm going to start to integrate some smoke. I think I'll have this one kind of come toward me, which means I'm going to have to go race there. I'm not going to do it, but just you know, so you know, I'll have some tendrils of some stuff coming off there. You want how that your phone gets off the hook? Yeah, yeah. No the mystery. dog just literally knocked it off. He was like, "No, this phone can't be on here." So there you go. Did you say you were streaming this Wednesday? Like yes, this Wednesday. Two days from now. Yes. All right. Inquiring minds wanted to know. I'm not the inquiring mind. So, I'm not going to go into doing all kinds of shadow all over this, but that basically kind of gets the the gist of it across. Um, those are the major elements, and then once you do, you know, put a little shadow. I'm going to put just a little bit here. Obviously, you want to be cleaner than what I'm doing here. And uh, a little more here, and and just start to you know fill it out with with some shadow. Uh, I'll make that dark here, and it really starts to look like a, an explosion. That's very very loose, but that's the general construction to kind of make it work. I can do more of this around it here. I can have more stuff kind of coming off and then uh, dropping. Like this would be you know a piece of debris that is blowing up from the explosion. I could do some coming out toward me like this. So that's that's basically that's basically it. Lockmaster Finch. The question has been asked about the stream next week. Right. Would you like to address that question? Uh, yeah, we're not going to. You you've made a change in the plans. It's well, it's oh right because it's Christmas, right? Next week is Boxing Day. Okay, and we so we'll not be streaming next week. Now we're not going to stream next week. Or the week after, because uh, we've got Christmas and we've got all kinds of family stuff going on. I also have two streams with Ryan Benjamin uh, over kind of that whole period. So I'm going to limit it to those just for... So one will be on this channel, and that's on Wednesday. And the other one will be on um, on Ryan's channel. And that's going to be uh, just... We, I, you know what? I, I know we came up with a day, and my apologies. I'll give you a firm date, but it's going to be after Christmas. Andy Skelton has a super chat for 65 Mexican pesos. Hey, Dave and Meredith, Merry Christmas. Dave, I have trouble connecting the head to the neck. Any tips on that? Uh, yes, actually. And that is a very good question. Um, it's a pretty easy one. Somewhat. Because the thing is, the neck, like any other complex uh, shape or form, First of all, it has movement, and that can make things a little difficult. Also, it looks different from different angles. But a few things to really bear in mind. I'm going to draw my torso right here. This is my kind of standard angle when I'm just drawing a figure out of nothing. And now um, I've got a neck hole here. And so I'm just going to draw a neck from that. There you go. So my in the center of your neck right through here, you've got these long muscles that, that connect up like this. And I'm simplifying them, but that's basically what you need to know. You've got your Adam's apple in there. And um, your ear connects right up to this right here. Your chin comes down through here, and your head connects this way. All right. So there you go. That's how you connect it from that angle. From the side, I'm going to draw a head. Keep it pretty simple. I've got a, 
um, that's my ear right there. Uh, you can see that muscle connects down into the ear and the back of the neck connects here. And the, the overall, the neck connects to the center of the head. It doesn't connect, like it's a common mistake to draw a head, here's my head, and draw the neck coming off the back of the head. And you'll see that sometimes, or too far forward or whatever. So it's a really good thing to bear in mind that it really kind of connects to the center of the head. This muscle connects up to the ear. Uh, different angles obviously make things more complex, but that is a really, really good landmark for kind of getting that placed properly. Allison McGlone has a super chat for $1.99. Alice says, I can't wait to do a stream again. Let's draw. And she would like to draw. Hold on. Rip claw, and she'll do philosophy. All right. Now, I have to admit, I actually, I was thinking, so Allison McGlone, uh, me and a, a few other people are going to be doing, we're going to be uh, uh, playing D&D. I mean, we talked about this a bunch. I'm sure you guys have heard this. I was thinking, hey, we could do our characters. So, you know, I throw that out there. But Rip Club would be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but in the description for the video, I, um, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to Eric about this. I really wanted to say, hey, Eric, you need to check this out. But uh, I've been painting a lot, you guys know. And um, I found a, a video that I thought was really interesting. Jim Murray is one of my absolute favorite painters. He's got two videos that you can find online. They're both really, really uh, sped up to the point where they're, I would have said, almost useless, you know. But um, the channel that I found, and I can't remember the name, but the name is in, and apologies, it's Eugene. Uh, the name is, it's in the description. There's a link to the video. He does a 23 minute in-depth kind of analysis on the techniques that Jim Murray is doing. Uh, he doesn't really go into tools too much, but it's it's much more, you know, process, how, he lay, how he's laying the colors down, how he's working through different color transitions. Really, really interesting. Uh, I thought it was a great video and it is so hard to find information on that. Basically, my favorite painters are kind of the British Invasion from... Uh, from the late 90s or early 90s, late 80s, I guess, early 90s. And uh, I love that stuff. So I thought it was a really kind of a, a very, very cool video. So for those of you that are interested in painting, obviously, if that's not your thing, then, you know, there you go. But if you are, I recommend checking it out. I thought it was really cool. And yeah, link is in the description for that. Super chat from Greg Alice. Oh my gosh, Greg. Greg Aesthetic Art for $1.99. Hi guys, Merry Christmas. And Black and Merry Christmas, Greg. Yes. And Black Tiger 01 is a super chat for $5. As promised, I redid my Black Tiger. Took me forever and several tries. Hard to see. Send it to your DM. Many of you tutorials are on this. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Well, I'll have to check it out. And thank you. Oh, Tom Teacher reminded me of a song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. I came into this in such a good mood, too. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir. And oh, folks man. dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows. Sorry. Can help myself. And when somebody does that tonight, I can actually do it. Well, I can't That's wait for next great. Christmas. Deshaun Little has a super chat for ten dollars. I am gonna live for these Christmas streams now. Just Deshaun, I don't see a comment, so tag me if you have something you would like to say so I can read it. Michael DeFonte has a super chat for five dollars. Hi, Dave, Miss Meredith. Thank you for all the drawing lessons and Monday night draw lessons. I have learned a lot. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Jim Klein has a super chat for $5. Happy holidays, Dave, Meredith, and the flock. I hope everyone has a great holiday season. Thanks, Jim. Shoot. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you very much. I'm, I'm making mistakes over here. There we go. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a huge amount going on this Christmas. Not too much. We've got, you know, some family stuff. My mother's coming uh, Christmas Day, and we've got a few things going on, but not too much, which is nice. And uh, I'm going to be visiting my sister in uh, on the East Coast in Canada um, in January. So, it, yeah, um, that's basically, it's kind of Christmas, but it's going to be after Christmas. So it's, it's going to be good, especially because it kind of comes off of the, when everybody is so busy. So I'm going to go with my mother and our youngest. That would be nice. Uh, Deshaun Little hit me up with his super chat for another $5. Song Birds of Christmas by the Finch's Christmas album. The deluxe set was sketchbook by Dave Finch. Order now. Yeah. I love it. Don't you love it, Dave? Oh, yeah. I know you love it. Yeah, it's, it's the best. Thank you. That's awesome, Deshaun. Amy Morris has a super chat for $22. Tom, just a quick hi to the Flock Master and Flock Mama to thank you so much for all you do to help us grow stronger as creatives. Steel, sharpen steel. Merry Christmas and God bless. Big love. Awesome. Merry Christmas, Tom and Amy. God bless you guys. God bless everybody on the stream. Navy Shark says, I want Meredith Finch to record a Christmas album with her coughing between verses. So it'd be like, jingle bells. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. Robin laid an egg. There you go. You like that one? Batmobile lost a wheel and the Joker got away. Okay. Hey. I like it because he's laughing at you. <laughs> it's all right. I can laugh at myself. I welcome people to laugh with me. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> They'll I go, be, why? Uh, because they'll be more than happy to go, oh, yeah, uh, here we go. Laugh away. Tegmo Modelworks has a super chat for $2. Happy holidays to all. No said. Yeah, thank you so much, Tegmo. <clears throat> happy holidays to you. Extreme Navy says, hey, Meredith, and a one, and a two, and a Dashing through the snow. He actually has told me that he does it on purpose. Oh, the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> Bells on bob tails ring, making spirits bright. If ever there was a stream where I wish you were in a bad mood. I didn't sing a saying song tonight. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle okay. bells, all right. jingle all the okay. way. What? Nico Francis loves me. He says Meredith is hilarious. That's because they like watching you squirm. Truly. And I only did it for Nerf Herder, who said, Meredith, please do Jingle Bells. So I did. And he said, then ask Dave to draw a classic knight versus dragon to save the princess sometime for Monday Night Draw. That would be a tough one. But it would be a lot of fun. That actually really would be a lot of fun. It would be a tough one. I Dragons, they are harder if you're obsessed with like getting all that little detail in there. And I can kind of get that way. Like I, I need to find a shorthand for all the scales. because, And I've done this before. I, I've drawn dinosaurs where I was really happy with it. And then by the time all the scales are in, it's just so overwrought. It just died. Um. I, I really felt like that. Actually, I did uh, New Avengers with uh, with Brian Bendis, and we did a, a Savage Land story. And uh, yeah, I felt like I really destroyed the dinosaurs with scales. It just didn't look good. What are we looking at for time? Ah, we're good. Eight thirty. Oh yeah, it's only eight thirty. I got so many more, so much more time to sing Christmas songs. Yeah, I should be one. You know what? The problem is that I, I came up with. I thought I don't want to just draw one character. I'm going to get a few of the Island of Misfit Toys yeah. characters in there. I wasn't thinking. Oh, hey, Meredith's going to turn this into a, a chance to yeah. drive me clean out of my us. mind. Adam Meyer has a super chat for five dollars. Adam says, "Hate to be an egg, but have all those winter sketches." Thanks again. Adam, we just said they got mailed out. Yes. You missed it, but thank you for the super chat. 
Don't you worry. Hey, 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 hey. You're not showing on your cord, is he? Uh, he, he might have been. Yeah. Sorry, Adam. We, they're out. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they we, hit we've sent them. Yeah. It took too long. But they did get out. But they did get out. Navy Sharks has a super chat for fifty dollars. Navy Sharks says, "Hey Dave, hey Mary, hello to all my favorite flockers. Just want to share some holiday love. Happy holidays and a happy new year to everyone." Oh, Navy Sharks! Well, thank Mary you very, very happy much. Happy new year to you and everyone. Happy Hanukkah to all the people selling celebrating Hanukkah. And is it Diwali too? Um. Okay, I hate to. I feel like. It might be Diwali as well. I feel like I'm being very ignorant and uh, I apologize, but I don't know what that is. That Diwali? Yeah. It's like, um, I believe it's an Indian like celebration at this time of year as well. Uh, and by Indian, I mean like East Indian. Right, yeah. I feel like I should know that just from Manu. Manu, if you're out there, I apologize. It's all right. He was here in the summer. So, Dave, what did you ask Santa for for Christmas? Besides Meredith's stop singing. Um, uh, we, you know what? If I ask for something, I revise it to Meredith to stop singing. You know what I could sing is, we, I'm not going to be do this very well, but I'm going to try. We're on the island of me. That's copyrighted. Is it? Yes. Along with We Wish You a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Actually, it might be. I, I, I don't uh, think so. It's so old. Yeah. I, I really don't know. Actually. But you know what? It really could be. Could be. That could have been that could have been the straw that made this dream unsingable. I, Undoable. I do think the worst thing that happens if you do a copyrighted song is <laughs> is your video gets demonetized like they take your money oh, which wow. i mean you know it's not like they come here and arrest you and your channel is dead so it, yeah not to encourage you but that really was just like free reign just like yeah was, you're like go man go <clears throat> Whoop, dropping things. All right, what else we have? Black Elk 33 says, thank you for all your videos and tips. I've learned so much from you, especially with composition and just the overall flow of my comic. Also clothing and folds, so helpful. You. So helpful, sorry. Thank you again, David. Well, thank you very, very much. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. I, you know what, I, I will say the last video that I just did, if I would have known that it was unfixable. I think I would have just redone the audio before it because I cat must be here. Yeah. I, I spent a whole bunch of time uh, editing it like hours. And by the time I realized that it was unsalvageable, I was already so far in like, there was just no way I had to move on. I had covers due and I'm like, oh. you know, and I needed to get a video out. This is a problem. It's still bugging me. You can tell it's bugging me. Yeah. Next video will be better. So Red Hood Review says, hey, Meredith, have you ever heard of Hawkeye's Christmas song? I haven't. Have you heard of Hawkeye's Christmas song, Dave? No. Ooh. Is this Hawkeye? This is like Avengers Hawkeye? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, I have not heard of that. I'll look that one up. But it's going to be copyrighted, so. Yeah, probably. I'm just trying to claim every single one is copyrighted. No is particular to claim? no particular reason. Well, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. You keep saying copyright, so I must sing something. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Doesn't show signs of stopping. Okay. And I brought some corn for a pup. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. You know, there is actually a limit where I will just give up and say, okay, good night, everybody. You know that, right? David, We're getting on. close. We are not. Oh, yeah. Stop. Just relax. Just relax. 
relax and enjoy the holiday season. Dave. I'm such a grouch. You are I so grouchy. Don't even care. Are you taking your pill? I don't care. Yes. There's no excuse for it then. Dan Castell has a super chat for four nine nine. Dan says, "Happy holidays, bitches." Dave, that Spider-Man painting you did was world class. Was that for publication or was it just for fun? Uh, thank you very much, Dan. I really appreciate it. It was actually um, uh, uh, commission. So it was one that I owed for a little while. But thank you. I've got four more that I have to do, which is not good because I, I told you guys I was going to paint the, um, uh, you know what, here, I'll show you where I'm at with it. I don't really like it. Uh, Meredith says, you can't say you don't like the what I don't care. It's in progress, so bear that in mind. Well, you do that. Feliz Navidad. I'm begging you to just stop for, like, give me five minutes. Oh, David. Okay, so this is it right now. Uh, this is the drawing from last week. So, yeah, that's where it is. I don't know if I'm going to keep the red kind of under light. I'm a little torn on that. I don't know what I'm going to do for the background. I have some ideas. Actually, I, I'm pretty sure. Like, I know what I'm going to do for the background. The question is, I don't know if it'll work. All in all. And the color is very, it's just blue. Like, there's no color shift anywhere. There's no hue shift. It could have been better. Whatever. I'm pretty happy with it. It's just, and it was a tough thing. Like, I've never tried to paint a, any kind of a thing like this. So, yeah. Anyway, that's where I'm right now. We're going to finish it uh, tomorrow night, actually. Eric and I are going to do a little painting and get that one finished. He's working on one, too. Oh. Oh, and by the way, the next video is going to be um a painting uh tutorial video i want to do a video kind of about the process that we've been working on together uh, eric and i and uh kind of you know break it down show all the tools kind of where we are right now and uh yeah so that's coming up for the next video uh i will have another video very shortly after that though because i know most of you aren't really here for for painting so you know in respect to that, I, I don't want to just uh, do a painting video and then disappear for two months. I won't do that. Dennis Kelly says that Space Marine is sick. Luke uh, thank you, Woodson Dennis. says the Warhammer is sick. Everybody thinks it's sick. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it, really. So I'm on my last character, and then we can start lighting them. Can you tell him on strike? Oh, is that what you're doing? <laughs> uh, it was worth it. <laughs> All right, stop. No, I'm on strike. Seriously, you have been. You are so. I'm in a great mood, and you are. You are like the antithesis of a great mood. I, you know, I actually really came down in a great mood. No, I don't think you did. I, have not did. I don't think so. What are you getting me for Christmas? Uh, it's a surprise. By surprising me, you didn't get me anything. It's okay. I didn't get you anything either. Really? Yeah. Boom. Saved by the bell. Yeah. Even though, like, last year I got you stuff, even though I told you I wasn't going to get you stuff. Good, yeah. Well, this year, hold to that. And we'll... I actually didn't get you stuff this year. That's perfect. Tom Teacher says you're the Grinch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't sing that song. That's probably copyrighted. It is true. I am the Grinch. You're a mean one, though. 
But I mean, like, really, you've truly run out of Christmas songs. You've sung them all by now. I have not run out of Christmas songs by like, even the like the tedious fraction. I could sing Christmas songs all night. I could spend two hours singing Christmas songs. You you have been doing that actually. What are we at? Eight forty one. You spent forty one minutes in. Yeah. Silver bells. Silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. See? Yeah. I have still got lots. How about rocking around the Christmas tree? Rocking around the Christmas tree. See, don't even challenge me. I, I didn't. You did that to yourself at the Christmas party. So it did not mean that as a challenge. Mistletoe hung where you can see every couple tries to stop. Rocking around. The Christmas tree let the Christmas spirit ring. Later we'll have some pumpkin pie and we'll do some caroling. Saved by Tagma Model Works in the super chat for five dollars. Cavill is producing and starring in a live action Warhammer 40k series for Amazon. I know, yeah, I saw it. So He's been playing for 30 years. Exciting! So he's not gonna be Superman, which no, what we should do is be the freaking Witcher. Well, I think that ship has sailed too, yeah, unfortunately. Well, he, they should go back and reshoot the whole season. Yeah, <laughs> well, get him back. Look, we're all on board for that. It's just not going to happen. Get him back. But 40k, oh, I'm excited. Don't know what that is? Warhammer. Don't care. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> anyway, I'm really, really excited about that. I think uh, it's going to be awesome. Dan Genovese is a super chat for ten dollars. Dan says, "Happy holidays and happy New Year to the entire flock." Merry Christmas, Dave and Meredith, and thank you for a fun 2022. God bless. God bless you too, Dan. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much, Dan. Daniel Castelli has a super chat for $1.99. He wants to know, have you seen Silvestri's latest Batman yet? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I actually, uh, we I was talking about uh, um, Kelly Jones's cover for, for that very book, uh, this was would be about a month ago on the stream. Um, I have not actually done it as a book of the week yet. Uh, I should just do it as a book of the week. I've been kind of waiting because I, I really kind of want to do the whole uh, collection, you know, and really talk about the whole thing because it's not just one issue. But whatever, I should just do it. It's, I think, Mark Silvestri's best work. By the way, the story is good. Uh, he's He's a good writer. He doesn't really get the credit for that, which is, you know, understandable. He's he's an artist, um, and his art is so spectacular that it's kind of the headline in anything that he does. But uh, his writing is very, very good. And, he, yeah, all the way around, it's a great book. I was just talking to um, uh, Eric Gist about that, actually. You guys remember Eric? Eric has been on the channel a few times doing some painting, an incredibly talented uh, painter for – you guys know Eric. I'm not going to go into it. But yeah, I was talking to Eric about it. He's pretty excited about it too. Super chat for Anthony from Anthony G for $19.99. Anthony says, Happy holidays, finches and flock. This year has been a tough one and stifled my creativity and artistic growth. But this stream and community not only gives me something to look forward to, but puts gas in the tank. Thank wow, you. that's great. And yeah, you know what? There are going to be tough times. There are tough times for me. There are times I'm really motivated and times I'm not. It, it's it's a reality of it. But, uh, you know, as long as you keep trucking through, that's great. And I'm really glad to hear it. And thank you very much. It's very generous of you. Deshaun Little has another super chat for $10. Dear Dave, I'm a four-year hobby artist, but I draw with a pen only. Do you know other artists in your tenure that do the same? And thank you, my everything distant guru. <laughs> thank you very much. I, I'm assuming when you say a pen, you mean a ballpoint pen, like a just a traditional writing pen. Um, I don't know any artists that do that solely. I do know uh, Frank Cho uses a ballpoint pen for a lot of his really incredibly intricate and beautiful uh figure renderings you've seen that stuff meredith oh. he just it's beautiful beautiful stuff and if you're not aware i'm sure you guys are aware but if you're not check out his instagram because it's uh unmatched i mean it's incredible so 
yeah, it's not like it's not something that that people ever use, but um, as a as a a tool just on its own with nothing else, the, the thing is, it, it has a disadvantage of being. Um, you have a limited thickness. And so if you do a whole picture with that, if you're filling in darks, are you like scribbling slowly with the pen? So that's what I mean when I say that I don't know anybody that would just solely use that. Really, if you'd want to be able to break out a, a brush and, you know, go in and, and fill in some larger areas with a brush. Uh, speaking of which, I'm ready for the brush. And, and Diwali this year was in October, so. He was sorry as what? Diwali this year was in October. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Right. Sometimes it overlaps. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily just going to be on our calendar, is it? It's kind of easy to assume that the whole world works, uh, you know, on our holidays and whatever. It is it is so easy to assume that when you grow up. Uh, we're in Canada here, but it's like growing up in the States and the culture is... is uh, um, you know, very strong. So like, uh, there's just so much of it. It's easy to kind of grow up and feel like, Hey, you know, the whole world trick or treats and yeah, not really. Tario, he has a super chat for $1.99. Hello, Finches. Happy holidays and God bless. God bless you, Tari. Maybe it's Terry. Tari, I think. I think it's Tari. Either way, God bless and thank you. God very, bless very much. you. I just want you all to know as we're going through this stream that we'll be praying for each and every member of the flock over the Christmas holidays because Christmas isn't an awesome time for everyone, but we'll be wishing that all of you have an incredible, safe, blessed holiday season that brings you joy and that you all have a fabulous 2023 that the new year brings positivity and hope because we're ready for a year of positivity and hope. Hey, this Everybody has been is. this has been a better year. It has been. I right? feel like we've had actually a not a bad we've year. Had an amazing year. Uh, and I don't mean just us, like all of us, you know, like uh, COVID has has really kind of receded as a the kind of concern that it was and uh, we've kind of gone back to normal a little bit. There's been there, there's been inflation. There there like it's not been perfect, but I feel like we're on the way back. It has not been such a terrible year. And gas prices are down. I don't know if you saw that, Meredith. Here they are anyway. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I do because, man. Okay. I do because I'm the one that puts gas in the car, first of all. But, yeah, it's it's been expensive. So. Gabuda Ikamuda has a super chat for $5. Hi, David. Can we get a video about the state of AI and its impact on the art industry? It's a serious topic all artists should be involved in. Uh. Uh, while I do appreciate that, I don't do think piece videos and I'm not going to start just because um, I really feel wildly unqualified to be giving my opinion about anything. I just, it's not my strong suit at all. I, I'm happy to do it here just informally, you know, I'm like, so obviously I give my opinion here and there, but I really try and stay out of any kind of a, I think this is a pretty cut and dry thing. You know, it's not exactly like I, I'd be, um, uh, wading into something that's going to be really sensitive, I don't think. But yeah, that's not the kind of video that I do on my channel. I will say this, though. I've been very concerned about it. I talked to Allison, actually, on her channel uh, about that. That was a big conversation or a big part of the conversation we had on. It was Friday. Um, and uh, I talked to Eric about it a little bit today. Um, we're worried. I mean, you know, legitimately, I think you, you kind of have to be worried. At the same time, uh, while AI can do, it, it, it can make really interesting images. Um, and it is only going to get better. That's the scary part. It's only going to get better. So while it can't do uh, hands and it can't do certain things, they're going to sort that stuff out. But what they won't be able to sort out is number one that is just stealing other people's work and i think they have a legal a road ahead of them that is going to be difficult uh but also um 
if you have a specific need, like you have a seam, for instance, I'm doing a lot of Walking Dead covers, as you guys know, and each Walking Dead cover is, uh, it's basically a scene from the book, uh, sometimes very literal and sometimes a little more interpretive, but either way, it's a scene from the book. And I end up having to reference quite a bit for, for Walking Dead just because it's a lot more real world kinds of uh, stuff, kinds of stuff. And uh, so I end up going on Google and I start looking, and this is just for one element, the whole picture, you know, and <clears throat> I type in, and I don't think I'm completely helpless with using search terms to try and find what I'm looking for. It is so incredibly difficult to find, you know, the perfect usable image for exactly what you're looking for. I end up spending ages trying to get the right thing to use as reference. And even then I'm just using it as kind of like, it's, I, I'm not really even copying it, not because I'm trying to avoid, I am trying to avoid copying it, but aside from that, it's never going to be perfect. So I'm just using it just to help, you know, and AI art is a hundred percent relying on uh, these kind of um, verbal prompts that you use. And Google hasn't sorted it out well enough to, to, I can't type into Google speaking like a human and get what I'm looking for. I have to really try and kind of outsmart the program, trying to get the reference I'm looking for. It can be very difficult. For any of you that have been looking for reference on on uh, Google, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Well, uh, I don't see AR, AI art overcoming that uh, anytime soon. It is a major stumbling block for any kind of art that isn't just, hey, that's a cool picture. It doesn't relate to anything. It doesn't mean anything, but it's a cool picture. You know, that uh, to me seems like it, where it's going to kind of be for um, who knows how long. I mean, they haven't, I think that's going to lag long behind uh, the ability of it to, you know, copy a few different artists' work and, and do something with it. What I do think is going to happen is it's going to make uh, concept artists suffer. Um, not all of them, but a lot of concept artists really will. And that's a very serious thing. I mean, it's a great job, concept art. Um, there's certainly going to be concept jobs, but just to iterate really quickly, hey, you know, I'd like to try it. Like, let's put a little HR Geiger in there and boom, you know, it does it. And, you know, it does it well. That's a scary thing. So, yeah, it's going to have consequences. I don't think that it, it if you, this, I'm just talking about doing a cover when I'm talking about using reference. Now, if you're actually drawing a, a comic, you need specific shots, specific angles, and specific things and characters that look, um, you know, consistent and have the emotion that you're looking for. And, you know, getting it, AI is not getting there anytime soon. I'm not worried about that at all. Like, I, I think for AI to replace effectively uh, narrative comic art is. I just don't see it happening. I mean, I couldn't say ever. Basically, I, I think by the time it happens, we're all Skynet and, we're, you know, we're running from the robots anyway. All right. Thank you for that. Tom McGard has a super chat for $1.99. Tom says, Merry Christmas to the flock and the master benches. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And, uh, I'd say, you know, keep working. You're doing great. But I mean, you, you're you always working. You're always studying. I see the stuff you do on Instagram. It's coming along amazingly. It's it's so refreshing to see an artist uh, really going through and treating it methodically the, the way that, that Tomek does. So uh, I much appreciate it. Lee Tasby has a super chat for $5. Happy holidays, Finches. Dave, have you read Batman Demon by Alan Grant and Jim Murray? Also, what are you and Ryan Benjamin going to do for a video? Okay. What we're going to do for a video is a surprise. So I'm not going to spoil that. But I will say this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, well, I've known Ryan for, you know, the entire time I've been in comics. A long, long time. And not only that, but we have... Uh, our roots are so similar. He actually, where where I moved in, we, there was an artist condo um, in in San Diego where all the artists lived. Not all, but a lot. And uh, uh, Ryan actually moved out, I think, about a week before I moved in. Like, we have such a similar career kind of beginning, and he's been around for just a little bit longer than I have. So, yeah, we're going to have a lot to talk about. And he's coming, come, uh, kind of coming at it from a different angle, too, because he worked for Jim Lee. I worked for Mar Silvestri. 
Uh, so, you know, it's a, we're in the same place, but it's a bit of a, a different experience. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as far as what we're drawing though. Yeah. I can't say there was another part to that question. What was it? You've forgotten. Um, Ryan Benjamin. Yeah. I... What are you drawing? Thank you. Or is that what you just said? Yes. The Alan Grant, the Batman. Oh Batman. yes, right there you go. That was it. I sorry, you, I want to say I pay attention when you. Talk. <laughs> no, I can tell. But obviously, I don't. <laughs> you talk. I, I just assume you're answering questions. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I've I've got uh, Batman Demon by uh, by Jim Murray. Um, it's one of my favorite books. It's it's like a staple here. So yes, I I don't think I've done it as a book of the week. Or maybe I have. You know what? I think I might have done it as a book of the week. I, I'm pretty sure I've done Jim Murray. Have I not? If not, I need to fix that. And Dan Castelli has a super chat for $1.99. Dan says, hey, I almost forgot you named my chicken yet. So that actually it gives me a great opportunity to let people know what Dan named his chicken. And because Dan and Tom and Amy were the two who purchased the name your chicken tier of the sh the Kickstarter. Yep. Dan's chicken. We don't have any roosters, FYI. But we thought we did, and then it laid, we a, don't. It laid a green egg. But really, a green I, egg. She her name will be Matthew Castelli. <laughs> and Tom and Amy's chicken. Will be called Miss Prissy. Awesome. <laughs> so I'll post pictures of Matthew Castelli and Miss Prissy on the flock page. So you can identify and visualize your chickens. As they work hard, not laying enough eggs. Well, they're growing their feathers back. Yeah. So we had one chicken that was really kind of attacking the other ones. And uh... you know, the pretty chickens. They're the worst. Yeah, you look through the and you I, look through the catalog and get the most esoteric chickens you can find. The most beautiful chickens in the flock are like big bullies. Yeah, meanwhile, you know, there's a reason why farms all have basically the same chicken. I'm just saying that I had to call my neighbor who runs a sanctuary and is a big chicken person. She's like, Yep, yeah, the Orpington chickens don't get an Orpington chicken. That's all I can say. Because they're not nice chickens. Well, there you go. They're not nice to other chickens. How she's many like, chickens do we have that are Orpington? Two. Two, yeah. And hers are the same. She's yeah. like, they're the worst. I'd use bad language, but this is the PG stream. She has uh, roosters, And she too. said her Orpington roosters, which actually, sadly, got taken by a coyote this year. Mm, yeah, she right. said they were the worst roosters. She's like, they were not nice. They were not nice roosters. Yeah, I remember going to her house, and those things were eyeing me. Yeah. They did not look like they had good intentions. Down this Kelly says, Miss Meredith, so this is the last Monday night draw of the year, right? Uh yes, it, yes, is. it is. Now I've got a couple other um streams coming up, but this is gonna be the last one for Meredith. So this is your last chance to hear Meredith um sing. Yes. And apparently Russick says it has to be like prior to nineteen twenty-five. So so we might, <laughs> we might be, uh, we might, might get copyrights. Trump. Well, you know, we could sing this one away in a manger, no crib for a bed. See, I can sing that one. Yeah. Or, um, oh no, I want to sing the right one. Now I don't know. Instead, I'll read this super chat from Wayne Blackman <laughs> for $5. Happy holidays, guys. Thanks for all the great instructional info you provide. Thank you very, very much, Wayne. Really appreciate it. Daniel Castelli has a super chat for $4.99. He says, that's really cool. Matthew was my older brother who got me into comics when I was little. He was a big fan of yours, and he passed away three years ago today. Oh, Dan. Yeah, I'm he sorry to hear that. Our, his chicken after his brother. Uh, I gotta take good care of that chicken now. Yeah. That's so sweet. Two, three years ago today, that's a tough, this is a tough day for you, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I'm glad that we know that today is the day we're naming your chicken. 
because today's the day I got the the chicken naming um, spreadsheet. So I, maybe it feels appropriate. Yeah. So thanks very much, Dan, for sharing that. And our thoughts and our prayers are with you because I can't imagine. It's a tough day. Oh, yeah. Chris Burks has a super chat for $19.99. Chris says, I purchased a litho print of your Hulk transformation you signed at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, and seeing every pen slash brush stroke up close in person is truly ridiculous. I framed it right over my drawing table. Merry Christmas to you and Meredith. Merry Christmas, Chris. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Chris. Thank you very, very much. San Diego feels like so long ago now. Yeah. Now that it's once it gets cold, it feels like anything that happened when it was warm is like years and years ago now. So it, it's 901. It's actually time for the book of the week. Do you have a book of the week? I sure do. All right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so this week's book of the week, I'm just going to put it out there. This is Punk Rock Jesus by uh, Sean Murphy. Uh, this Jesus is no relation to the Jesus that we're you know, celebrating on uh, Christmas. Uh, if you, if you uh, do celebrate, all, you know, if you're, you know what I mean. Anyway, um, I've talked about Sean uh, Murphy uh, quite a bit on the channel. He's one of my absolute favorite artists. I think he's an incredibly um, innovative artist. There, there are so many uh, people working in the business that I think really owe a lot of their style. And there's actually uh, um, a book that we just, I, I did a book of the week a couple of weeks ago. I think that work was, was heavily influenced by, uh, by Sean Murphy and uh, um, so yes this is a book of the week for this week so uh, the what I love about his work is it's incredibly like all of his all of his uh, lines he does this I think pretty quickly and it, he just throws it down like it's it looks like he, he just has such confidence with these kinds of uh, backgrounds. It's so believable, all the detail. I love the the lighting that he's got. He, so he's got some candles and that's lighting the whole room and everything in the room is lit from those candles, which is a very difficult thing to pull off. He just makes it look easy. And it's, it's so well done that it doesn't even, it doesn't even really stand out as like, I think a lot of times when something's just done right, you don't notice it. And uh, yeah, it's beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, he actually, in his, he inks all of his own work there are places i don't know that you can really see it this might be a little bit blurry to see uh on the camera but he a good part of his work is he'll ink a little bit and then he just uses his thumb and dabs his thumb and gets texture just from his fingers on his stuff i don't know of another artist that uh has done that before him uh, you know i'm sure it's happened and i you know you guys can let me know but uh it's he really makes that work so so well uh, another thing that he does incredibly well, I love this kind of thing here. So he's got a lot of contrast. This is really what we're focusing on for this panel. You can see he's got a, a shadow through here, a shadow here to kind of frame uh, this area plus, you know, the shadow from the window. And then this area here, he wants to show the city and show that it's an environment, but it's all very darked out. He's got just a little bit of light uh, coming through here. So the, the buildings are lit from below, which is, you know, it, it gives it a really nice glow. A very, very simple thing, but yeah, beautifully done. Um, uh, all of his stuff. I, I, this honestly, this book I kind of picked at random. I could have picked uh, any one of my Sean Murphy books, but um, I've studied this one quite a bit, so it's one of my favorites. I think for that reason. But uh, the other thing that that he's really famous for is are his uh, his vehicles, and uh, you can see it with his motorcycle here. I mean, look at that shot. That is absolutely amazing. Not just a motorcycle, but the entire shot all the way around. And he just makes it look so easy. Uh, like These buildings, they're not all just drawn in perspective. Like this building here is kind of coming up at an angle. Uh, he's got some different angles going on. This is, a, a, this is angle two. So it's not just a simple one point perspective, but it, it's um, it, just adding because really it is kind of a one point perspective, but then he's just got this building, this right here, just that element really, really makes the whole city feel much more alive. I want to show you some of the, um, 
as we go further into the book because there's some pretty cool uh, vehicle stuff in here. Like that shot right there, so incredibly good. Uh, the, the car in there looks so great. The crash looks so believable, but also, he I, I don't know if this is a bit of an anime or a manga influence, but the way that he's done the speed lines, the texture, like he's got a this kind of a, like all the splatter texture is so beautifully done. It's something I really need to kind of experiment with more. I, I really rarely do it, and I always love the effect. Uh, and he does it like an absolute master. It looks incredible. And I, I think part of the reason the splatter and all of the texture works so well with his work is his actual lines and his rendering is so clean and precise and so crisp that it just gives it a really, really nice um, kind of a visual range. Look at that motorcycle. Absolutely amazing. And I think there are vehicles that you can actually buy like you know, toys of, of his because they do, they, they're so well done all the time. Uh, and I, I think I mentioned this in my how to draw cars video that I did. This is a couple years ago now, but I actually, I did not know this and it's embarrassing to say this, but I didn't know that based on the, I'm going to show you because it's hard to explain. So I'm going to draw a wheel kind of in perspective, right? don't mean my book of the week to turn into a little mini lesson here, but it is what it is. So this is straight up and down. Here's a wheel. And that's right along my horizon. Now I've got my horizon here and I've got my angle here. It's a pretty extreme angle. For me to draw the wheel, I need to draw a line perpendicular to that. And that's going to be the angle of my tire at that, at that angle. And so if I'm drawing a car uh, and it's in perspective, so here's, here's my bumper, here's my roof. Like it's, you know, this is a pretty extreme perspective. I'm killing this. You know what? <laughs> I apologize. When I don't think these things through, especially when it comes to these kinds of things, I feel like I, I do a terrible job of explaining. But my point is that the wheel is always going to be perpendicular to whatever line on the horizon that it's that it's at. And that's something that I learned from Sean Murphy. So if I'm drawing a gun, maybe that's a good example. Here's my barrel for my gun. I'm going to draw a line perpendicular, and that's the way the barrel goes. So I don't want to draw a, here's my barrel, and then do this, which I see this happens. And you can see it just looks off. Uh, and it seems like a simple thing, but especially with vehicles, people make that mistake all the time. I did. And uh, so, yeah, a great book or a great you know, resource just for that, uh, Sean Murphy. But uh, really for me, it's it's much more about his work. I love all the dry brush stuff that he does. And the uh, he used a lot of Zipatone. I'm assuming that his Zipatone is done uh, kind of in post on the computer. It's very difficult to find uh, Zipatone now, but I could be wrong. I don't actually know if he does this on the actual physical artwork. But yeah, every background shot is amazing. His characters have so much expression. He also has a really wide range of different kinds of faces. I feel like every skill, uh, he just does well. Also, I can tell a Sean Murphy figure right away. I mean, all of these figures just have such a, a strong feel. He has a, such a, a unique visual style, his own. And I've seen people copy it. I've never seen anybody uh, really capture it. So yeah, truly beautiful work. This is a massive book, by the way. It is incredibly long. There is so much stuff here, and it's all great. I mean, look at that shot. I think that's a good place to end. Look at that. Reflections in the water on the ground look amazing. Um, yeah, it's just, it's beautifully done. Uh, I, you know, I kind of wish I knew where he got some of the stuff, you know, like where he learned some of uh, the texturing and, and some of this sort of lighting. I, I have some idea, like Jorge Zafino is very, very good at that kind of thing. Um, and some other artists, but I, I think uh, Sean Murphy really kind of took it to another level and really made his made it his own. It's really, really special work. By the way, I'm flipping through this book kind of willy-nilly. Look at how thick this book is. It's enormous. So yeah, really, really recommend it. It's a it's a great book. It's a great resource for artists, I think, because he's he's got so much uh, incredible, you know, um, visual stuff to work with. So there you go. That's Punk Rock Jesus by uh, Sean Murphy. And it's falling off my desk. I'll put it on the floor. All right. All 
All right, wake up. I'm awake. Hold on. I got something for you. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. How lovely are thy branches. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. How lovely are thy branches. You literally spent the whole time I was doing that just finding out what songs you could sing. Your best so green in summertime. So bravely green in wintertime. Oh, Tannenbaum. Oh, Tannenbaum. How lovely are thy branches. Let me, let me see what's next. No, no, no. No, no. It's risky for me to try and do fur with a brush. Really? Yes. I, I really usually think fur and a brush would go well together. It well, it depends. This kind of fur where it's it's a little bit more just a, a bit of a lighter texture, because I don't want it to get too dark. But yeah, that's a risk. So I think I'm gonna stop there and I'll do my fur with my um with my tombow. Oh, Artsy Bible Nerd had a song request. Oh, great. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. This is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Oh, Russ Hicks sent me Meredith's copyright free Christmas list. <laughs> Russ. Russ is the best. Why, Russ? Why? Deck the halls with bars of holly. Why you do this to me? La 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 Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. We have the best people on the stream. Yeah. Russ, you're the greatest. Drive by commenter as a super chat for five dollars. Happy holidays. Infinitely grateful for you sharing your knowledge. I was wondering how you draw perspective with uneven and sloped ground. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I've got to run out of room. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to draw a panel. First, we're going to do sloped ground. So um, generally speaking, my horizon is going to be like this. Uh, if I want to uh, alter the angle, and I'm going to assume the slope ground means that I'm, I'm shifting the camera. We'll do a different version in a second if that's not the case. But so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust my horizon and uh, I'm going to make this a uh, two point. So I've got, and here's my other point right here. Obviously, I would use a ruler when I'm uh, really lining this up. And so and and here's my uh parallel i'm just going parallel for this so uh, i can put like a, a building here you know and uh some other thing here and maybe something big in the foreground here and i'll put a little character and he's walking through all this stuff and so there you go there's a slope ground in a panel uh but that is actually just adjusting the angle that's all you really have to do uh for slope ground so here's my panel um Loomis, Andrew Loomis has tutorials in his book. You can find that it's all available uh, on online for free. You can find PDFs of this. So I'd recommend checking it out if you really want this to be technical. Uh, I don't take it that far. So uh, I'm just going to basically what I'm going to do is uh, here I've got a sloped foreground. I'm going to do like another hill in the background. And you can see I'm just kind of layering. And I'm going to draw a road coming up here and then kind of coming here and uh, coming here. And uh, my uprights are still going to be upright. So if I had like a building, it's still going to, it's still going to sit on there upright uh, like this. And here's another little building in the background. Uh, people don't build buildings um, or any, you know, kind of man-made structure to uh, you know, if you have a hill, they don't draw a building off the side of the hill like this. So it really is only the ground that that affects if you have actual sloped ground. 
uh, yeah, and really, like if you're drawing a forest scene and you want the ground to be, you know, you don't want to just draw a flat ground. Really, all you have to do is is something like this. So here's here's a a sloped kind of a foreground. I'm gonna go like that for my background. I can draw a tree kind of hanging here, and maybe another tree here. My path is coming through here. I got a little path coming in the background, and and really, it's it's just a matter of um, just drawing that that ground in, uh, and and uh, that's truthfully about as far as I've ever needed to take that. Now, if I wanted to draw um, like a, a cobblestone kind of a thing on here, what I would do is I'd say, okay, uh, what direction is my my road going to go? And I had it kind of coming like this. And so I would just eyeball it and kind of fake it. And I'd get smaller and smaller as I get in the background. And it would just be like that. And, you know, back here would be... That's really all I would do. So there you go. I hope that's helpful. I hate to admit how uh, jerry-rigged and, you know, uh, simple my solution is, but it's all I've ever needed. And as cheapo as that looks, that really is, you know, all you need. Thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. Especially because um, buildings, things like that, are always drawn, you know, uh, level. It, it, I, I'm really very okay. Uh, another example of something that you might want to like. I, I think you can find this in the Loomis book. You have a, a hill, and you have telephone poles on the hill, and trying to measure those telephone poles, it gets much more difficult. If you want to do it uh, accurately, I've read the Loomis method for doing it. Uh, obviously it would work. I've never put it into practice. It is uh, complex, I'll say that, you know, way too complex for me to ever, first of all, okay, truthfully, kind of understand. I, I think I could understand it if I really, you know, at least I like to think that I could understand it if I really uh, studied it, but I've just never felt the need. Honestly, uh, if I had to draw telephone poles along a road it, in that kind of a situation, I would fake it. And uh, that's always been good enough. On the first day of Christmas, my David gave to me a chicken in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a splitting headache. Two iris wolfhounds and a chicken in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my David gave to me three gypsy banners. Two Irish wolfhounds and a chicken in a pear tree. Alice McGlone has a super chat for four nine nine. She says, "Do you want me to get Jeremy on to talk about the game when we draw our characters?" Yeah, yeah, that actually would be great. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Jeremy, by the way, is a. Um, an expert on uh, Robert E. Howard, like a university expert, which is very, very cool. He's the guy that's going to be doing our Dungeons and Dragons. Just bragging. It's going to be awesome. I feel like you're going deliberately slowly doing this picture. Uh, I'm really not. And if you like, I can sing more songs to help you speed up. All right. Adonarium says, Happy Holidays, Dave Amerita. <laughs> Thank you very much, Adonarium. I think it's that time of the night. We can ask for people to hit the like button. 340 people are watching. I know more than that. We'll hit like. I'm 307. That's my like number. What's your like number? And 317,000 people, Dave. You're going to be at 320 in no time. Yep. You can see how this pen is already, like, it's so much better for drawing this kind of stuff. Why are you ignoring me? Yes, we'll be, yeah, and it's great. <laughs> Sorry. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Do so now. 
so that you don't miss out on any awesome YouTube tutorials and fun stuff like the Ryan Benjamin. Did you post all that in the community tab? Uh, not yet. I'm going to be doing all that. But you do post stuff in the community tab. I do, yes. Fair enough. And I'm going to post it on Instagram. Red Hood Reviews says, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a jar full of Granny's peach tea. That was a good one. Captain Supercat has a super chat for $5. I'm drawing ninjas at night with no moon. Any tips on lighting? Uh, yeah, okay. So now I've kind of done something similar to this before, but basically here's here's what you're stuck with. You can do panels like this. Uh, here's my, here, I'm going to draw a ninja. Here's another ninja. Imagine those are ninjas. And I'm going to draw the ground. And then my sky behind them is going to be dark. And I'm just going to leave them as reverse silhouettes. And that's a, a technique Frank Miller uses, different artists use. The, obviously, this doesn't look much like ninjas at all, but you know what I mean? Basically, imagine that that is. And so uh, that's something that you can really use very, very effectively. Um, you know, not all the time, obviously, but it's a panel choice to really keep in mind. Uh, another option. So I'm going to draw. Here's my, my ninja. And I want to have a black sky. And so I'm going to draw my black sky behind them. And now this is where you need to bear in mind that movies and television use this technique all the time. This is very, very common. You'll never see or almost never see a scene where you can't tell what's happening. Uh, people can be wearing all black. It's the middle of the night. The, the scene is, is at night. And they light it in such a way that you can tell what's going on. And so here we go. What they do is they'll have um, a nice big spotlight on the character from behind. So you're looking at, you know, the light coming and hitting. And so here you go. And that'll give you a nice dark character against the dark background without totally losing everything. I could actually just darken this whole side. And you could just lose that whole side. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. Or you can. So there you go. Uh, that's totally going to work. This is actually a panel you can use over and over and over again. And people won't even look at it and go, oh, you're doing the same thing over and over again. It just works all the time. Uh, it's, it's a very cinematic uh, technique. And then the third one is to uh, just leave the sky light. And so you've got your, you know, your dark shape and here it is. And uh, you leave the sky light behind it. Here's another ninja here. And that'll still totally work and it'll still sell as a, a dark sky. You don't need to draw an actual black sky in every panel. As a matter of fact, I think that would start to get a really impressive looking on a page. So um, don't take a black sky literally. I think that drawing it dark is is really useful and you should do that from time to time. Um, you know, another here, here's another, and this is Sean Murphy actually did this in his thing. So I've got a dark figure here. Imagine that's a figure, not a scribble. And now I've got my dark sky kind of behind him. I'm gonna put a little detail. I'm gonna imagine he's in a city because I'm doing Sean Murphy, you know, but there you go. That's a dark sky behind him. You've got uh, maybe a little detail. You don't even necessarily need it. And I, I can just kind of fade it out toward the bottom, maybe put something in the bottom here or whatever. But what I'm doing is is fading it around the character. Uh, Sean Murphy, actually, I really recommend taking a look at that book that I did for Book of the Week. He's, he's great with that kind of uh, technique. He does black skies all the time, something I don't really actually very much do in my own work. But there you go. There's four different kind of ways to um, to work with that. What you can't do, obviously, is a black sky with a black character. So, you know, you have to find solutions to, I mean, you can, but you need to rim light it uh, the way that they would in a movie. Thank you, David. Welcome. 
Super chat from Rob Lowe for $5. Your inking is superb. I have trouble with line weight. In your opinion, what determines this? Color, shadow, etc. And thanks in advance for your knowledge. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, now, I will say, Rob, I, uh, and thank you. Um, I did a video on line weight. Um, and it really is everything that I know about line weight. So, and that's really what I'm doing here. Like I've got my lighting coming from above. So underneath his chin, I got a little loose with this because I use a brush and I'm not good with a brush, but that's really all I'm doing on the underside of this hair. I'm going to go a little thicker since my light's coming this way, this will be thicker here. And I'm just kind of going to go through and finish this picture. And this is going to largely be the detail that I end up using for this thing. I put in enough characters that I'm going to have to, I'm not going to be able to overly detail them. And I, I kind of wanted to do that on purpose too, just because, um, when you overly detail cartoony characters like this, it's it's not nice looking. But that's uh, that's really all there is to it is uh, just going thicker away from the light. So this underside of the thumb is thicker. But these are also I'm using these as shadows. Uh, the um, distinction between line weights and shadows is is kind of small. But the biggest distinction is you know if I've got um, I'm going to draw big, big shape and ignore the thick line that I did there that thins out to a really thin shape. A line weight is going to be uh, like this and pretty even all the way along. But a shadow is going to be much more, you know, like this and much thicker where it's thicker. So that's really kind of the distinction. But yeah, definitely check out that line weight video. It really kind of goes into uh, quite a bit of detail about exactly my, um, my thinking for line weights. Michael DeFonte has a super chat for $5. David, the drawing is beautiful so far. You should be proud. I love it. Thank you very much, Michael. I really appreciate it. I'm having fun. I, I kind of bit off a little more than I could chew, <laughs> probably, but I think it's going to work. And it's only 927. I have enough time. I, I think I can pull this together. Like, I've actually, I've got a little bit of work to here to do. She's going to be on top of, um, oh, I tangent into that. Dang it. I don't think I can fix it. So yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of going through this in, in line waiting um, and shadowing as I go. Uh, and that really kind of comes down to time. I, I actually spent years uh, doing line weights almost completely and then going into shadow, which I recommend doing, you know, but you'll find as you gain confidence, it just makes more sense to kind of do both. But, you know, I, I would always say you really don't want to. Um, uh, push yourself just to be faster into doing things that make your art weaker when you're learning for sure. I mean, you get a job and, you know, there's a certain amount of, you get a, you need to get it finished when they ask for it. Um, if you want another job. So, you know, you, there are, are shortcuts and become actually part of your style. Uh, for instance, you know, me not understanding any kind of a complex uh, usage of uh, uneven ground my uneven ground knowledge is, I mean, you could see how shallow it was, right? I, I don't understand that much at all, but I just can't afford to go deeper than that with it uh, and, you know, have a job. So, uh, so many things. And this YouTube channel has been a challenge for me in a lot of ways, a good challenge, but a challenge just because um, so, my, um, so much of the stuff that I understand and I know, I don't actually understand or know. I just have kind of... Um, workarounds that I've, I've found have worked. Uh, sometimes I'll get it from another artist. I'm like, oh, I like how he approaches this. And I I spend my whole career never considering it beyond what I, I just stole from another artist. There are more than one thing. There's more than one thing that I, that I could say that about with my work. So, you know, is what it is. This is a problem with this YouTube channel. You know, it really just, okay, you know what? I'm a total expert and I know Taking everything. Taking away all the myths. I know. I'm a genius, everyone. I never learned a thing from anyone. This is all just, you know, I woke up one day and because of, yeah. 
uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, we're all in the, the same boat for sure. And it, it so much is just your willingness to uh, go through the pain of, of learning. And it is painful, you know, and um, <laughs> I would say, if you're feeling really down about AI art and you're, you're really worried that it's going to uh, take away your career, this is not the first thing that people thought was was going to be an end to art. And I, I don't think that it's going to be able to replace us. Not that easily. Dennis Kelly has a super chat for $5. And it says, hey, Dave Meredith, Merry Christmas. Do you have a recommendation for medieval art reference other than Frisetta? And thank you so much for all you share with us. Uh, thank you very much, Dennis. Um, yeah, absolutely. Hal Foster. I've done Hal Foster as a book of the week. If you're looking for medieval art reference, that is, I'm, like, I shouldn't just stop at one, but come on, he's, uh, Hal Foster is the best. If you're looking for some, like a, a painter, or that kind of a thing, um, uh, the pre-Raphaelites actually have some pretty interesting stuff. Frazetta is such a, a case of his own, though. I don't know of anybody doing those kinds of, you know, super dynamic, really cool shots um, before he did. So, but yeah, I'd really recommend Hal Foster. If you're looking for really authentic kind of character design and some really interesting, you know, things, he's he's great with it. Deshaun Little has another super chat for five dollars. Is Lieber Mayho art style a combination of digital and AI or God given talent? God given talent, hundred percent. Yeah, Lieber Mayho is, and you know you can tell there's no AI going on there because uh, his work is he's a great storyteller. He's a uh, uh, he doesn't just do covers. You know he does whole books, and uh, AI is not pulling that off. Um, yeah, he's he's incredible. And a really nice guy too. You know Libra Mayho, right? You met him, Meredith. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was very nice. Yeah. I have yet to meet a comic artist I didn't think was very nice. Let's go through a list of people we hate. <laughs> Allison says Larry Elmore. Oh yeah. Larry, you know what? Actually, not just Larry Elmore. Uh, Larry Elmore, Keith Parkinson. Oh, you know, there are quite a few. Um uh, Clive Caldwell, uh, great uh, D and D artist. Now this is all D and D art, but you know the influence is very strongly uh, medieval, sword and sorcery, and whatever. And so, yeah, uh, I definitely recommend a lot of those artists. The kind of eighties D and D, um, or you know, early crew. Larry Larry Elmore is great. Um, my favorite is Keith Parkinson, who unfortunately passed away way too young. Eric feels down. I need to sing another Christmas song. Eric? Yep. I haven't done We Three Kings yet, have I? <laughs> we, and that's Allison's favorite song, one of her favorite songs, too. We Three Kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following your star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect sight. I don't know if that's the last two words. But yep, that's the last two words. <laughs> you get the point. Hopefully that makes Eric feel better. <clears throat> can't believe Eric. Oh, and Dan Genovese wants to know if I sang the first Noel. And Paul Essenson is going to get banned. He says, who's strangling the cat? <laughs> the first Noel, the angels did sing. Now my voice is kind of because I'm sitting funny. Paul Essenson threw you. Oh. <laughs> Was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay, in fields where they 
play keeping their sheep. See, I'd do better if I had my high voice, but I can't put my high voice on. On a cold winter's night that was so deep. Didn't you tell me you can't make excuses? can't make excuses there you go it's so funny like I, and i've said this advice so many times to you know people showing their work and it's true advice by the way i mean it, you know it is good advice but uh it is so difficult to present somebody with your work and resist your to say mm, i'm not really happy with all of it you know i don't really like this here or you know kind of start making excuses it's so hard to avoid doing that Chris Burke says, I feel so bad for poor Dave, LOL. It's so pain for, painful for him every single time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's true. And I gave Charles Montano an ear, earworm. He's got the 12 days of Christmas stuck in his head. <laughs> uh, sorry, Charles. Oh, Eric's bummed because you're streaming on Wednesday with Ryan Benjamin. He won't be able to do it because he has a commitment. I forgot. He can't do Wednesday. Oh, yeah, I know. I know he can't. Oh, I totally forgot. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. You. I know. He Is says, it? I have not missed a single stream since the beginning. Oh, man. David. I'm going to talk to Ryan and see if we can reschedule. You've got to reschedule. You can't leave out. I know. Eric. I'm going to see if I can do it on Thursday. Terrible. Shame, shame. I wasn't even thinking. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You know what? Story of my I'll life, see what Eric. I... He wasn't even thinking. Now you feel my pain. Yeah. Did you lock the gate tonight? <laughs> yes, I locked the gate. The Jinga Ninja. I want to know by saying the drummer boy. Yeah, I think that was my first one. I think it might have been, yeah. And Kelly Serena says, we're singing along with you, Meredith. So there, Dave. Yeah, right. Hey, that was my favorite song of yours that you sang all night. Yeah? Yeah. You're the worst. <laughs> oh. Allison's just, she can do it if you need someone because her plans got canceled for Wednesday. And Eric says, no, don't reschedule. Uh, I'm going to see if I can reschedule. And I do appreciate it, Allison. But, I'm, you know, we've had Eric, um, you know, every single day. I, I can't just say, oh, yeah, whatever. So we're going to try and reschedule. I'm going to see how it goes. If we can't, then we can't. And, you know, um, well, we'll see. I, I uh, We'll see. but I'll find out ASAP. Nettlewood Park says, somebody remix Meredith singing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We need a dubstep mix of your... Yeah. Some of it's good. Some dubstep? No, some of my singing. I'm... I knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah, I know. Always got to take a shot. Extreme maybe says, you know what would make you feel better, Eric? Meredith, a one and a two and a <laughs> I did I already do White Christmas? Dreaming of a white Christmas. Next New York, me and Extreme maybe are having words. Just like the ones I used to know. My voice is going. I don't sing a lot. Oh no. Anyway. That was my. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, but that's all the lyrics I know. I know the tune to the song I sing, but all oh, the lyrics go out of my head. Okay, okay. Once we start getting there, like you, you that's see... when you're like, I'm done. Yeah, like. Just reasonably. I started it, and then I realized I didn't know the lyrics. Yeah, that was the time I mean, to I could stop. sing along, but yeah. Sorry, Dave. Don't be so grouchy. I'm not grouchy. You're so grouchy. Absolutely. Red Hood Review says keep singing, Meredith. Oh. 
What are we looking at for time? Ah, we're doing great. Lots of time. How hard is it to draw hair like that, Bumbles? Um, it's not hard. Are you asking? No, yeah, I'm as myself asking it a question of curiosity. Okay, so I'm going to draw a point like that, close it in, and then I can, you know. Because um, you can't draw every hair on it. No, you have to draw clumps. So if I kind of clump it from the bottom, that gives it a, a starting point. Otherwise, if I don't do that, I just end up with this. So, yeah, clump it at the bottom and then just kind of feather up from there. Is he your last character? Everybody else is done? Uh, pretty much. Pretty close. I've got like a little more detail here and there on a few different characters, but yeah. Uh, look, Remember I said you were going to draw the Bumble tonight, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. We'll be done early, and I can go to bed. Yeah, and well. And then you added like 600 characters to it. Yeah, I, I know. It's true. I always got to just add value. The only good news about that is that you add value to my life, too. Right. Oh, so sweet. So I'm not going to draw a shadow from his leg. Because if I do, it'll be really distracting. And it'll be like this long thing. Even though I drew a shadow from this guy here. And I do that kind of thing all the time. Like, if I feel like a cast shadow is actually going to make things worse, um, you sometimes you kind of have to put it in. Like, it would be weird if you didn't. But I know I can kind of get away with that. And so I'm not putting that cast shadow in for that reason. Hopefully that makes sense. Sky masks. Shy mask says the bumble terrified me as a kid. I even had nightmares, and my sisters still make fun of me to this day. He scared me too. Oh yeah, scared me too. I wasn't allowed to watch TV I when I was a like kid. Have to cover my eyes yep. and hide my head in a pillow. Oh, it was intense. Day. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy that it would have been intense, but it was. You know what though? That show, if you watch it now, even it still holds up. Like, yeah. There, there's just something about the it, the story of being a misfit. No, because you are. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you know, maybe there's and something. Too, to, if that helps. It's it's the type of animation just has a uh, like a. It's like claymation. Yeah, like it's it's actual a, a physical real thing as opposed to you know um, animation, and I, I hope that doesn't sound like a slam against animation. It's certainly I don't mean it, but um, yeah, it. It just has something to it that that makes it potentially much more disturbing. I think uh, another example that really kind of strikes me that way is uh, the Neil Gaiman thing with the girl. Coraline. Yes. Yeah. Which you hated. My favorite. Yeah, and I, I think that's why. I don't really like the Nightmare Before Christmas either. It's not my style. Yeah. Oh, I don't that's... like dark. I'm a Disney girl. Right. I love both of those movies. Isaac loves them too. Yep. Yeah, see, we have that in common. We have so, so little in common sometimes, and then we are so, we have so much in common. It just depends, you know. So we thought the train was Thomas. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's... The train was square wheels. Oh, dang it. I... See? Can't you take didn't me. do square wheels on No, him? of course not. He's got square wheels. I remember. That's why he's a misfit. <laughs> the minute you said it, I, I remember. I don't even think that really looks more square. Yeah. Uh, I train with square wheels. My darling, you can't cry. Cry chili. So he's supposed to be eating a cookie. I don't think that really comes across at all. Why did you not do Yukon Cornelius? Not that because I he typically goes with the bumble. I, I know, but he's not one of the misfit toys. But the Bumble isn't a misfit toy either. Yeah, I know. I don't understand. Well, I was originally going to do the Bumble, and I just thought, you know what? I want to put something else in there, make it you know, a little more Christmassy than just a abominable snowman. And so I, I put these guys in. Fair 
And yeah, I had to draw a line somewhere. FBC LLC says, I really never thought I would want a misfit drawing. And then this. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I'm having a lot of fun with it. That's for sure. I always actually really enjoy doing these kinds of like more cartoony sort of. Um, it's looser for me just because I have so many characters on here. I, I kind of I put a lot of characters in kind of with the understanding for myself that I wasn't going to detail this too much. And I was going to allow myself to be a little looser. But it's Type a lot of model fun. works is not only the cool part had square wheels, only the tender. Oh, see, uh, that uh, that could be interpreted as round. <laughs> One way or the other, You're fine. we did it wrong. Yeah. The Jenga Ninja says, I've already watched this movie twice this year. My seven-year-old loves it. <laughs> Uh, that's great. We're going to end up watching it this year, I'm sure. Um, oh, yeah. And we've already watched a few Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Basically, I end up watching parts of Christmas movies. I'll come up and you guys are watching and I, I slink away as fast as I can. I'm the worst host for a Christmas show. Yeah, you're not very fun for Christmas. It's true. Sheldon Martin has a super chat from 999. Next year, I'm putting a Christmas Santa hat on you. I haven't watched that show since the 90s, LOL. I'll have to rewatch it. Merry Christmas, everybody, and enjoy your eggnogs. Eggnog. I haven't had eggnog yet. It's my favorite. I love eggnog. You love eggnog or you hate eggnog? Oh, yeah, There's no in between. Polarizing drink on the planet. You like eggnog, Dave? Uh, no. No. We have to be talking about life-changing money for you to get me to try that again. Really? Yeah. It's so good. So rich and creamy. Eggnog is the goat, says Jenga Ninja. And you could put rum in it. Yeah, look, it, again, you know, it's great. I would not say it's bad. I mean, too many people like it, right? but it is not for me and not for a lot of people. It's like pineapples on pizza. Matt, Matt Canty says, this year my wife got soy eggnog. We may get divorced over this. <laughs> That's the line. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm right there with you, Matt. Like, what the heck? Uh -uh. If you're having eggnog, there's really no point in making it vegan unless you have an allergy uh, yeah but uh, there is look i can't have wine i can't have red wine uh, and i don't bother trying to find red wine that works for me because i've tried and it is some awful stuff so yeah i just let it go sometimes you just have to let go i have the dog and the cat on the couch now Oh, they love it. Interestingly, the cat is a similar color to the dog. I never let them dog. in here. Pardon? I said they love it. I never let them in here. Oh, yeah. They are thrilled. Cat used to come in here all the time, but with the dog, I had just started closing the door. You're a mean one. Yeah. Yugoslav Art is drawing the Grinch right now. A, oh, nice. Also known as David Finch. <laughs> Finch yeah. the Grinch. Yeah. I have been called that before. Yeah, well, for a good reason. Yeah. For a good reason. This is my second time drawing a hairy Christmas character. What was your first time? The Grinch. Oh, that the Grinch, yeah. Last year, you didn't have to draw a hairy character. No, no, that was a quickie. Yeah. Didn't take too long. Well, that's because you didn't add 5,000 characters to it. Uh, that's, that's, yep. That's another factor. Got to admit, though, for all the characters that are on here, it's, it's rolling along. Yeah, let's admit that. Dennis Kelly wants to know if it's the sulfates in red wine, and that is what it is. Uh, well, okay, look, I, you know, do I have a, you know, an actual 
clinical analysis of what it is, no, but I, I think so. Sure. Yeah. I've been finding beer does the same thing. Like, it's because beer's got sulfates in it too. Yeah. Preservatives. You don't have that problem when you have the growler beer. Yeah. So. Well, I don't need beer that much. So. Really all started when you lost your gallbladder. Yep. And then it was all just downhill from there. <clears throat> Which I lost from stress. That was stress before Meredith. Uh, right. Right. Yes. That's what I meant. All right. Yeah. And don't get excited. No, oh. but it's starting to, it's starting to turn into a, you know, there's a, always a turning point with a picture when it starts to come together enough that it's starting to look like something, you know? And I feel like it, it kind of has hit that point. That's all I'm saying. It's not finished, but I don't think it's going to take too much longer from here. The stream likes you. Underwater Space Traveler says, nah, Dave's no Grinch. He's so sweet and kind. And Dennis Kelly says, Dave is the antithesis of the Grinch. Thanks, guys, really. The problem is that I just... I'm emotionally stunted <laughs> about that. We'll put it that way. Artisan 1979 says, now I want eggnog. So thanks, Meredith. <laughs> Diet ruined. Yeah. And artsy Bible nerd says, your Dave's heart is three sizes too big. <laughs> Aww. Really? You guys are too nice. Unlike your wife. So we play uh, Euchre all the time. Uh, us and, and friends of ours. We go to their house. We go, you know, they come here. We play a lot of Euchre. And uh, every time Meredith, like if she makes it or, or whatever. Anyway, the joke is she has no hearts. So, you know, you've got hearts, you've got clubs, whatever. And you have to make it a suit. And people have to follow suit. So you lay down a club. If you have a club in your hand, you have to lay, also lay down a club. Pretty simple, right? Anyway, uh, yeah. If you are playing against Meredith and you lead a heart, you are foolish because she has no heart, which means she'll just be able to put a trump down. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you don't play the game, but the point is she has no heart. <laughs> Clinically proven through playing cards and yet here i'm the one singing the christmas songs <laughs> and you're the one grinching yeah so dave do you know the name of all the characters on that drawing that you're making uh, yes, this is the Jack in the Box. This is Thomas the Tank Engine. With, he's Jack in the Box <coughs> with no box. This is Dumbo. This is Raggedy Ann. It's a dolly that can't cry. This or is, that cries instead of laughs, I yeah. think is her problem. This is Wendigo from um, Alpha Flight. Stop. And this is... I can't remember what's wrong with the elephant. I've seen the show. How many times have we seen this stuff, too? Like, I've seen it. I swear every year for oh, yeah. years, but sometimes you just like, you don't store stuff because you're just going to see it again next year. Well, there's that. And then there's also the fact that, uh, I might've seen it every year for years, but it's not like I'm sitting there, you know, engrossed <laughs> Put it that way. Toys and Misfit Island King moon racer. That was the lion Charlie in the box, Dolly cowboy riding an ostrich, the spotted elephant. Oh, so it's because he spotted. Yeah. Choo choo train with square wheels on the caboose, a scooter for Jimmy, and a water pistol that shoots jelly. <laughs> I don't remember the jelly pistol. I do. Do you? Yeah. He squirts it all over Herbie's face. And then Rudolph licks it off, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Deshaun Little has a super chat for $10. I used ballpoint and I saw Kim Jong Ji one day and you on YouTube four years ago. Never used a pencil. 110 
thousand hours rule. Digital is the closest erasing I can get. <laughs> yeah, you know, look, ten out. I, I this is Malcolm Gladwell. Gladwell, whatever. He, anyway, he had the book, uh, ten thousand hours rule. Basically, you study anything for ten thousand hours, and that's the key to mastery. Yes and no. Um, you have to put that kind of time in, I don't know, 10,000 hours, whatever, but you have to put a ton of time in, but you also have to study smart. You know, you can't just, um, you, well, you, you, you have to learn proper anatomy. If it's drawing, if it, whatever it is, there are skills that you need to learn and you need to devote those hours to learning those skills in the best way possible. Uh, so yeah, it's true, but you know, and also we have aptitudes. And I, I think that that's one thing that the book really uh, kind of glosses over a little bit because we don't like to believe that we can do anything if we just, you know, put the time in because it's really easy to say, well, hey, you know, I didn't have the time to put the time in. Otherwise, I could have done it. And uh, look, um, I can't do math and I don't care how much time you give me. So, you know, th that is also a factor. I, I think, though, the nice thing about drawing is that, you know, from a, a pretty young age that you can draw. Uh, you can feel it. So many of you guys are so incredibly talented and you can tell that you can draw and you, um, I think just enjoying drawing is a really good indication that you can draw. People tend to gravitate and enjoy things that they excel at. It just makes sense. So anyway, yeah, I agree. And I don't a little bit, but that's it. I'm finished. Well done. And it's that's 950. Amazing. Well, it's 957, but I finished at 955. There you go. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Um, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, um, whatever it is that you're celebrating. I hope you have a great time with, with family. Uh, if you are spending time with family and I hope you have a nice relaxing time if you're on your own and, uh, we will be doing a stream this week. I'm going to talk to Ryan, uh, straight away. I'm going to email him tonight, confirm the time. We were looking at Wednesday. I'm going to see if we can do Thursday. And apologies, Eric. We can't do Thursday because we have plans on Thursday. Oh, see, this is, yeah. You know what? We're going to talk and we'll try and figure it out. You know, it's possible. Whatever. Uh, we'll find out. I will update You'll you guys. It on, the, on the community tab. Yes. And, I'll, and uh, on Instagram. And yeah, I'll update you guys uh, just as soon as I know. All right. Anyway, thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. And God yeah. bless. All right. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.